ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू माय लास्ट फाइव आई हैव बीन विथ डैकॉन फॉर सिंस इंसेप्शन इन लास्ट सिक्स इयर्स फोर लेक्चर्स दैट हैज बीन अलॉटेड टू मी बाय बंसी हैज बीन एन एफ एल डी वेन इट वॉज नॉट वेरी प्रेवलेंट वी डिड नॉट नो द सिग्निफिकेंस हार्ट फेलियर इन डायबिटीज विच वॉज वेरी अर्ली थिंग टू बी टॉक अबाउट ओरल जी एल पी वन डिसेप्टर एगोनिस्ट अ ड्रीम और अ रियालिटी वेन ओरल सीमाग्लिटाइड वॉज नॉट लॉन्च एंड द फोर्थ वन वॉज एंटी ओबेसिटी मैनेजमेंट फार्मेकोलॉजिकल एंटी ओबेसिटी मैनेजमेंट वेन इट वॉज नॉट रेमपन ऑल फोर थिंग्स हैव कम थ्रू दिस डेज सो आई विश दैट दिस लेक्चर विच इज एब्सोल्युटली अ प्रीमेटिव लेक्चर और अ प्रीमेटिव ब्रांच would also come true within next 5 years i know it is going to be a very very boring lecture because there is very little to know about it but i am pretty sure you all will enjoy looking into what lies in future rather than what is at present so it all started in 1976 about 50 years back when patients with diabetes were are over represented among total cases reported with ipf that was the first uh, statistical analysis that was done but then it was drowned anywhere somewhere uh, remained only on paper and nobody thought about it it raised the question whether this is an association only or whether diabetes itself can cause pulmonary fibrosis so now since 2021 we have started realizing that lung is just a lung is also a target organ for diabetic microangiopathy in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes now just give a thought you have been talking about the blood vessels in retina which are even miniature in calibration than what we see in the lung but we have never thought about microangiopathy being affected or micro uh, microvasculature being affected in lung so that was something which has been neglected for years and is now coming on to the surface this day evidence of pulmonary microangiopathy is the thickening of pulmonary capillary and pulmonary arterial wall and decreased lung capillary blood volume in patient with type 1 diabetes with a random pattern of tissue involvement and this is how the possible pathogenesis that has been thought about where you can see that hyperglycemia leads to a compromised uh, dna repair in the cell or in the microvasculature and that ultimately leads to persistent dna damage and that ultimately leads to fibrosis we all know that it is the connective tissue that is very very important but equally important is the thinking about the lung architecture where you see connective tissue normal cells and simultaneously capillaries lying side by side and all these three layers are affected by diabetes practically all over the body then why not the lung so as i said it starts with a dna damage impaired dna repair and ultimately leading to persistent dna damage that leads to senescence that is the death of the cell marked by release of pro inflammatory uh, cytokine and that leads to fibrosis but basically apart from microangiopathy there is also a simultaneous involvement of lung connective tissue which actually forms the framework of the elasticity of the lung and therefore all connective tissue rather than working in harmony start working in disharmony once diabetes sets in there are multiple structural changes which have now been noted across the all the global studies that has been found out pulmonary function test is the first to get affected remember we hardly do pulmonary function test even in our patient with copd or asthma so forget about doing it in diabetes but it's high time in next 5 years we are going to do pfc and find out an impending lung disease in patient having diabetes especially if there is reduced lung volume in type 1 diabetes or a reduced pulmonary elastic recoil in both young and adult patients 
of charity. Impaired pulmonary diffusion, which can now easily be detected by pulmonary function test, would be something which would attract more attention, especially after an epidemic or pandemic of COVID. One should always remember that PFT may is still likely to underestimate the prevalence and degree of lung dysfunction, and therefore, not only FPV1 and FPC, but we need to go for a better optional pulmonary function test, especially the carbon dioxide diffusion capacity. All the studies so far have shown that it is not the duration of diabetes which impacts the lung, but it is the impaired glycemic control or an increase in HbA1c which remains for more than one year that ultimately leads to the impaired lung function. What are the pulmonary complications of diabetes that we can see? And there are so many. Infections, we all know about them, but we'll be sticking to five only. So, bronchial asthma, one can always see that it can, and COPD, where both, you can always see there is a decreased response to the uh, therapy. Simultaneously remember that a patient of uh, uh, COPD or bronchial asthma are on inhaled steroids many a time and they can affect the glycemia. So it is diabetes which is affecting COPD asthma and asthma which is affecting COPD, uh, diabetes management. Tuberculosis we all know very, very well. Higher prevalence in patients having diabetes. About eight out of 10 countries with the highest prevalence of diabetes are also having the highest prevalence of tuberculosis. We all know when diabetes is not getting controlled, at least 10 years back, we always used to think that probably patient might have tuberculosis if there is weight loss. With newer modalities of diagnosing tuberculosis, it becomes imperative for us that a patient having weight loss with uncontrolled diabetes, we should think about tuberculosis just as we think about HIV. Tuberculosis in diabetes leads to higher tissue destruction, much cavity formation, and more chances of uh, resistant tuberculosis. This is all because of this sort of pathophysiology where hyperglycemia leads to growth, viability, and propagation of tuberculous tissue. Even the X-ray findings in tuberculosis when there is uh, coexisting diabetes are atypical. It could be lower lobe tuberculosis or a multiple lobe involvement, high incidence of cavity lesions, high incidence of pleural effusion. What's the effect of ther on therapy? You may require intensification of anti-diabetic treatment. Many a time a question is asked, tuberculosis with diabetes, should we always go for insulin? If you can control glycemia, it's fine, but about 50% of patients require insulin to reach to the glycemic target. One should also think about the drug interaction that we commonly forget, and that is rifampicin with sulfonylurea. Remember, they have got a very terrible, upsetting uh, drug interaction where the effect of sulfonylurea is hampered with rifampicin. Same way, INH rifampicin and vitamin D, all of them have an impact on glycemia. Coming to second part, pulmonary infection, we all know much more common. I don't need to go into details of it. However, certain characteristics of pulmonary infection in type 2 diabetes are higher risk for pneumonitis uh, because of uh, the lost uh, host defense goes down and simultaneously pulmonary function is also reduced. These days, while talking about semaglutide, most of the time we forget the astroparesis that our treatment causes intentionally. But unintentionally, we forget it. Remember the gastroparesis can lead to frequent aspiration. So patients on GLP-1 receptor agonists, and I would extend it a little bit more, even on gliptin, one should always think about gastroparesis and one should be ready, especially in critically ill setup, one should be ready for aspiration pneumonitis. HB1C level correlates very well with nasal carriers of Staphylococcus. Commonly we see GNB infection when type 2 diabetes and pulmonary infections coexist and 
Legionella and Aspergillus should always be kept in mind. Once again, most of the time, no, uh, nosocomial infections are polymicrobial, and by polymicrobial, I mean viral with bacterial. So many a times we get influenza positive and we get relaxed, even if it is a lower lobe pneumonia. But one should always be ready that it could be a combined infection, and that is where one has to be very cautious. What is the important thing? Important thing is immunization. Always immunize all our patients to prevent at least influenza and uh, pneumococcal infection, which means pneumococcal and influenza vaccine is a must for all our type 2 diabetes above the age of 40. Never underestimate the power of statins. Statins have shown efficacy as an anti-immunity agent and reduces the respiratory infection in patients having type 2 diabetes. What's the impact of diabetes treatment on pulmonary uh, function and treatment of infection on diabetes? So the commonest drug that is being suggested by uh, IDS, uh, uh, Society of uh, Infective Diseases, is quinolones and estrogenone. But be careful while using quinolones. They are not very safe in type 2 diabetes, at least in Indian setup, where it from taking from uh, rupture of tendo Achilles to hypoglycemia to seizures, there are so many side effects and there are black box warnings. Avoid aminoglycoside as long as possible, even if there are GNB infections and altered RFT must be kept in mind. One can see, coming to pulmonary fibrosis, one can see that as the diabetes, uh, the duration increases, the chances of pulmonary fibrosis increases as we see in our uh, real case scenarios. But this is not commonly seen in trials or in analysis of IPS. However, whenever there is CKD or DKD, the chances of uh, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis is very, very high. And therefore, all the patients having DKD as, as soon as they start developing some sort of dyspnea on exertion, one should be careful. So coming to, how do we work up? So work up is long-standing diabetes and albuminuria patient should undergo regular PFT. If you cannot get PFT done, think about breathlessness, especially a six-minute walk test. And what is the guideline? The guideline says that a normal person or a person with healthy lungs should be able to walk between 700 to 800 meters on six minute walk. If he cannot walk more than 400 meters, at least that patient should undergo a pulmonary function test immediately. So this simple thing keeping in mind would always help you, especially patients having uncontrolled diabetes, they should undergo six minute walk test. There would be many patients of type 2 diabetes uncontrolled would be saying they are walking 2 or 3 kilometers. These are the people on follow-up should be asked, have you now reduced the, the, the distance that you were able to walk previously? And if they say yes, of course on one side we keep heart failure in mind, on other side we keep impaired pulmonary function in mind and these are the patients who should undergo PFT. Coming to last few slides. Diabetic autonomic neuropathy, especially if there is postural hypotension, can cause abnormal basal airway tone because of altered vagal pathways, and that should always be kept in mind because that reduces the, the clearance of mucus and can lead to frequent collapse. Gestational diabetes, this has been a very well-known association for years together, as we know that there is increased incidence of RDS, uh, compared to offspring of non-diabetic mothers and that's why one has to be careful while delivering a, a, new, a newborn to a diabetic mother. What is the impact of anti-diabetic drugs or anti-hyperglycemic drugs on pulmonary function? Well, metformin has shown to be protective to the lungs but the insulin has not shown Remember, these are most of the trials in their primitive group because the pulmonopathy in diabetes is a very recent topic. 
but now there are lots of trials that are being carried out to look for the effect of oral antihyperglycemic drug or injectables on the pulmonary function test and of all insulin has been suggested to cause not only pulmonary neoplasm it is only association but can cause it but simultaneously it can also cause reduced pulmonary function so coming to despite the knowledge that reduced alveolar gas exchange occurs in type 2 diabetes despite a clinical proven accelerated decline in lung function in diabetic patients despite the pathology proven abnormalities of alveolar capillaries where we have seen capillary and microangiopathy in lungs these days and despite the role of pulmonary autonomic dysfunction it is really tragic to see that the issue of diabetes induced pulmonary dysfunction has not gained the attention that it deserves probably after a long time we have seen some conference talking about lung and diabetes because most of the time you will be hearing heart and diabetes is it time to substitute the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis in diabetes with a terminology of dipf that is diabetes induced pulmonary fibrosis if you would have asked me till 2021 i would have said no but now with a lots of evidence is pouring in we might see an association that has gone and evidence is pouring in and probably a new terminology diabetes induced pulmonary fibrosis may come out on the surface very soon there is a large number of exciting data and many clinical observation which says that diabetic pulmonopathy uh, is going to be or pneumopathy is going to be a next area of investigation lots of evidences as you can see i am not going into detail because of lack of time so concluding my talk although it has been shown to affect almost every organ in the body the lung is one of the most neglected target organ of diabetes we have never given thought that the lung may be affected in diabetes most pulmonology literature forget about diabetes literature most pulmonology literature does not address diabetes as an influencing factor for lung disease the diabetes lung association is considered a newly investigated concept the lung is now a target organ for diabetic microangiopathy lung function test especially in a symptomatic patient whose 6 minute walk test has recently been affected or whose walking distance has been recently affected pulmonary function test should be carried out even in a symptomatic patient two yearly pulmonary function test may guide you to lots of storms that are bound to come diabetes mellitus can cause impaired lung function proven now decreased respiratory muscle endurance diaphragmatic paralysis dyspnea but more importantly as one of my student is doing now uh, he is also presenting a poster uh, uh, today only pulmonary hypertension in diabetes you will be surprised just have a look at his poster you will be surprised to know the incidence differs a lot in patients not having diabetes versus diabetes those who are really interested this is a wonderful 2021 article which would give you a lot of insight into this thank you thank you very much